remembering that the Jesuits were the authors of the French Revolution with its resultant military dictatorship of Napoleon Bonaparte, we must now examine the Jesuits' Russian Revolution and its resultant military dictatorship of Joseph Stalin. In doing so we shall examine key events before, during and after. The Tsars, although the protectors of the Knights of Malta, had become a problem for the company. Alexander I expelled the Jesuits from Moscow and St. Petersburg in 1816, and, with a ukase in 1820, like Peter the Great, expelled them from Russia declaring that all their efforts, were directed merely to secure advantages for themselves and the extension of their power. Five years later, Tsar Alexander I, in good health, died suddenly. He, like Napoleon, had been poisoned. Upon the death of Alexander I's successor Tsar Nicholas I Tsar Alexander II ascended the throne. He greatly outraged the Jesuits. Remembering that he was one of the key monarchs obligated to enforce the policies of the Jesuits' Holy Alliance, Alexander II enacted many liberal reforms. He abolished espionage and emancipated the serfs. As a result, the Jesuits incited the Polish rebellion for which the Tsar revoked his predecessor's concordat with Rome. The Tsar also broke diplomatic relations with Satan's papacy in 1866, and again in 1877, further outraging the Jesuits while fueling their conspiracy to ultimately overthrow Russia's Romanov dynasty. Finally in 1882 the very year the anti-Jesuit Triple Alliance was formed Tsar Alexander II, in laying the capstone of his reforms, had attached his signature to the proposed constitution of Russia. This the Jesuits would not tolerate. It violated the absolutism of the Holy Alliance and infringed on the temporal power of the Papal Caesar. If the Tsar's absolute monarchy became a constitutional monarchy with express limitations upon its powers, how could the Jesuits' infallible Pope eventually rule Russia in accordance with the Council of Trent? Those limitations would restrain the Pope's temporal power, disabling him from ruling the Russian people through the Romanovs. With a free Russia, the Jesuit general's grand design of submitting the Orthodox Church to the Vicar of Christ would never come to pass. The Jesuits had to act quickly. As they had used Masonic Matsina to punish Pope Pius IX for proposing a constitution for Italy in 1846, so they would use the Masonic Nihilists to punish the Tsar for nearly succeeding in establishing liberal government in Russia. Pius IX was forced to flee from the Vatican to Gaeta but Alexander II, who maintained liberty of conscience, would be assassinated. We read, Alexander II had progressed well with his great reforms and had attached his signature to a constitution to be adopted by Russia. The next day a bomb was thrown at his carriage, which killed and wounded a number of Cossacks, who accompanied the carriage. The emperor in deep sympathy left the carriage to look at the dying men, when a second bomb blew him to pieces. Alexander III, in coming to power became a fierce absolutist. Though formally suppressed, the Jesuits used this tyrant to fiercely persecute the Jews with their many pogroms. Of one we read from the great Pierre van Possen, but more frequently the conversation turned to the persecutions that the Jews were undergoing in Russia. The Great War lay still in the future. I vividly recall that Sunday evening when a Russian Jew with a long white beard, who kept his hat on, ascended the pulpit and in broken German, told us the whole harrowing story of his people's persecution. His own wife and children had perished in the bloody attack. Before her death, the woman had seen the mob throw her two children into a burning oven he went on to say that thousands of young Jews all over Russia had begun to arm themselves with revolvers, determined to defend themselves if the attacks should be repeated. The pogroms produced the desired effect. The deceived Jews developed a great hatred for the Tsar just like the Jesuits. And when the time arrived for the overthrow of Nicholas II and the purging persecutions of the Russian Orthodox Church, the Jews would rally to the cause in overthrowing Rome's old enemies. Remember Fiddler on the Roof. Little did they know they had been framed by the sons of Loyola and would be blamed for the atrocities of Russian communism. Part of the setup was the circulation of the protocols of the learned elders of Zion. Laying the blueprint for a world socialist communist state, it was very much like the order's secret meetings at Chieri, Italy exposed by Abate Leone's The Jesuit Conspiracy, the secret plan of the order in 1848. Its authorship was attributed to the Jews but the true source was the Society of Jesus. We read the words of our ex-priest, Bible believer and evangelist to the Roman Catholic people of New York City, Leo Lehman, although first published in Russia in 1903, the Protocols of Zion had their origin in France and date from the Dreyfus Affair, of which the Jesuits were the chief instigators. These Protocols of supposedly Jewish leaders are not the first documents of their kind fabricated by the Jesuits. For over a hundred years before these Protocols appeared, 
the Jesuits had continued to make use of a similar fraud called the Secrets of the Elders of Bargue Fontaine against Jansenism an anti-Jesuit French Catholic movement among the secular clergy later outlawed by a Jesuit-authored papal bull. Alberto Rivera, one of our fearless heroes and a converted Jesuit, agrees, we were instructed that the Jesuits directed certain Jews who were loyal to the Pope, to write a document called the Protocols of Zion. When it was published the Europeans went wild. Additionally, in the little town of Fatima, Portugal three young children, ages 7 to 14, supposedly saw Mary appear six times between the spring and fall of 1917. This unbiblical, Jesuit-contrived, Lady of Fatima hoax, calling for the conversion of Tsarist Russia to Catholicism, was the religious propaganda used to incite and then unite the superstitious masses of Europe to attack Rome's ancient Orthodox foe with fire and sword. As a result, from 1917 to 1989 Russia would be conquered and then reduced to obedience to the Jesuit general's infallible Pope, using the Russian branch of the sovereign military order of Malta. The Society of Jesus would launch the Bolshevik Revolution and Brutal Civil War, 1917 to 1922, it would then negotiate a secret concordat, a treaty between Lenin and the Pope, and establish the Inquisition through its Grand Inquisitor the thug Joseph Stalin, using his Jesuit admiring hatchet man and head of the Chaikot. Felix Edmundowicz Dzerzhinsky, whose father, Edmund Dzerzhinsky was a Jesuit-controlled, Polish-Roman Catholic priest. Stalin would purge the nation of its Protestant and Baptist churches and, toward the end of his life, attempt to kill every Russian Jew, 1922-1953. Excerpt from, Vatican Assassins by Eric John Phelps <laughs>